This conference manage, will now be recorded. To manage the business via a process oriented. So for those kind of applications where you have different set of actors playing on a single platform. So that means there is an application where you have a different set of actors engaged together to complete your business. So that is a business workflow. And that for that set of applications, we use Pega. And we saw how to install the Pega software. And after that, once we install the software, we need to log in. So for the user, so whenever we need to log in, so by default, we have given the administrator at pega.com is the user ID and password is the install. So if you're using this credentials, we need to start our development. So here we will see the space where we are going to use the configuration options to do the development. So here we have a dev studio. So which is renamed from Pega 7 with designer studio. So in Pega 7, you will see dev designer studio, whereas in Pega 8, we'll see dev studio. Similarly, you have app studio, which is also used for development, but this is used by the business analyst and the UI UX people. That means initially when the user interfaces are developed, so those people will use this app studio. So it is a low level development, sorry, high level development where it will be having very limited number of capabilities. So whereas we as a developers, we always use this dev studio to do our actual development. So all the options are available from to do the Pega application development. So in the dev studio, so we are going to use the options which are there in the dev studio. All right. And admin studio is the studio where we are going to have administration related activities done. All right. So using these three, we are going to manage our application development from end to end. And once we log in, so you can log off again by using this option or uh, you see there is an administrator, whoever logs in. So that person's the first letter of that person who logged in. So will be showcased at the bottom left side. So clicking on it, you will see certain options are available. So if in case you want to log off, you will go with this log off option. And in case if I want to see this operator who logged in and the information of this, so you by clicking on this operator, you will see this rule form opens. So every rule form opens in this workspace where you have different tabs available in this rule form and you have certain options given in this rule form based on the type of rule it is. So in Pega, everything that we deal is a rule form. So we have a lot of rule forms we need to study and each and every rule form has its own behavior. So we just need to configure that rule and Pega will automatically take care of what has to be done. Okay. So operator rule is, a, is responsible for logging in purpose. So in case you need to change the password, you just go to the security tab and you update the password by using this option. Okay. So you have, similarly, you have multiple options available. So for the work that we do, so we are going to consume these set of options. Okay. So I'm going to discuss one after another whenever it comes in picture. Okay. Whenever we are using it. So that option, we will discuss it later. So as of now, the operator ID requires the access group, which you see here. So this access group is responsible once we log in. So which application I need to showcase for this operator with whom I'm logging in. So as of now, I logged in with operator administrator at pega.com. Okay. So for this operator, I have an access for the application called Pega platform. So you can see the name of the application that I am accessing is Pega platform. Similarly, while we create a new application, something like a loan application or a healthcare application or a banking application, or any kind of application that we develop. So the operator that we have will have a sub separate access group, which will point to the application which I am working on. So this access group is responsible to which application I'm having an access. Okay. So you have an option to add multiple access groups as well. If you add multiple access groups, so you will have an access to all those applications which are pointed in this access group. 
okay so wherever you see this double circle it is a rule type so you see this is a rule which you can open it by clicking on it so if you click on this double circle it opens that rule in a new tab so here it opens this new rule okay so where you can see this options are what what this access group rule does for us okay so you can see the access group naming convention is something like it is having colon in between okay so the naming convention for an access group is in general what is the role for this access group what it is going to do for us okay so in general application name followed by colon followed by what is the role for this access group okay so access group is basically providing you the access for an application what you can do what you cannot do so that accesses will be restricted in your access group rule type so access group rule type is responsible for providing the access for the operator what is that you can do what is that you cannot do okay what is the application that you can access so that is something you define on this access group rule form so under the definition tab you see we have an application name that we specify so here you are getting pega platform application so how this is the one which is an application rule name okay so this is again another rule type so application is another rule type where you can open this okay and each and every application is associated to a version so we'll come back about what the version is but this is also a rule which has an associated version you can open and see this rule okay so now you can see this application is another rule all right where you have something called as rule set so this is i'm discussing only the major things here okay so uh, there are so many options are available but majorly what is that this application is mainly used for currently we are discussing what is mainly required to start our application creation okay so there are other options as well which we will discuss while we are going with the development activities okay so in order in order to start our application creation so what is the terminologies that pega utilizes so only those things i am focusing right now so here in the application rule form you have application rule sets so rule set what it is so everything whatever we are opening here it is a rule okay so in general every rule should be associated to a rule set so it is something like a container where you place your rules okay so every rule should be associated to a rule set in pega okay so this is something the it's a container where you place your rules inside it all right so a rule set is a container where you place your rules inside it so every rule you create okay so every rule that we create it should be associated to a rule set so this is a rule this is a rule this is a rule so all these rules are placed inside a rule set so there is a rule set that we need to use while we are creating the rule okay so again in each and every rule set we have again a different set of versions available okay so this rule set let's assume this is rule set name abc okay so this rule set called as abc rule set which has a version allocated for it and in general the version that we have is xx iphone yy iphone zz format so there is a rule set so every rule that we create it should be associated to a rule set along with a rule set you have a version as well okay so this version is basically there is something called as a major version which is xx yy stands for minor version zz stands for patch version so these are the different type of versions naming convention that we follow so version is major minor and patch versions okay and in general you have this major minor patch versions defining in the range of 0 1 to 99 okay so if you take xx 
इट मे हैव जीरो वन और वाई वाई और जेड जेड ओके एंड इट लाइज बिटवीन जीरो वन टू नाइनटी नाइन दैट मीन्स यू आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम जीरो वन जीरो वन जीरो वन दैट इज योर फर्स्ट स्टार्टिंग वर्शन एंड फॉलोड बाय जीरो वन जीरो वन नाइनटी नाइन सो सॉरी नाइनटी नाइन नाइनटी नाइन नाइनटी नाइन दैट इज द लास्ट वर्शन ओके सो टिल दिस इन बिटवीन यू मे हैव मल्टीपल सीक्वेंसेस सो यू मे इंक्रीमेंट द वर्शन बेस्ड ऑन योर डेवलपमेंट दैट वी अंडर गो लाइक इनिशियली यू विल स्टार्ट योर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ योर रूल सेट स्पेसिफाइंग जीरो वन आईफन जीरो वन आईफन जीरो वन सो दिस इज समथिंग वेन एवर वी आर स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द एप्लीकेशन बिल्ड फ्रॉम द स्क्रैच सो यू आर यू आर गोइंग टू कंज्यूम दिस मेजर वर्शन एज जीरो वन माइनर वर्शन एज जीरो वन एंड पैच वर्शन एज जीरो वन ओके सो इंक्रीमेंटली यू विल डू द पैच वर्शन इंक्रीमेंटेड एंड वंस यू कंप्लीट ऑल दिस पैच वर्शन देन यू विल शिफ्ट टू द माइनर वर्शन दैट मीन्स so initially you will have start with 01 iphone 01 iphone 01 then you will follow 01 iphone 01 iphone 02 okay similarly you will go with 01 iphone 01 iphone 03 so in this way you keep incrementing the patch versions till you will get 99 okay so this is something we are going to uh, decide based on our development activities okay so in general we'll take this patch version something like whatever we are developing it so we are going to consume a rule set under rule set version and in general we will increment this rule set version something like every 2 weeks or every 1 week okay so we will allocate that this particular development that we are doing okay so that should consume a particular versions okay so maybe it may consume 01 to 99 so all this 01 to 99 patch versions might be taken for one set of development activities okay so similarly you may increase the next version of minor after you complete all these patch versions okay so it is not always recommended till you go till 99 even till after 10 of 10 version also you can go to the next version of minor something like 01 iphone 02 iphone 01 Okay. so this is not hard and fast rule that you need to complete all the 99 patch versions and then only you need to go to the minor version that is not hard and fast rule so it is something taken a call by the lead that this particular version can be utilized for doing this particular development activity okay so that the version we need to consume it while we are doing our regular development activities okay so which version to be used we need to be uh, uh, given by the instructions by the lead so that i am going to use that particular version while i am creating the rules okay so every rule should be associated to a rule set and there is a version also we need to specify for it okay some rules may not required a version also some rules does not require the version to be associated it only requires the rule set okay so there are some rules which you would which where you doesn't see the version specified so you will see only the rule set will be associated for those rules okay so we'll show you what all those rules are but in general the regular uh, uh, rules that we create most of the rules that we create it will associate to a rule set version as well all right and once after you complete all the minor versions then you will move to the next highest version which is 02 iphone 01 iphone 01 okay so this way you keep incrementing the patch versions or minor versions and then you will come for the major versions okay so this is an ongoing development activity so in order to come to 99 iphone 99 iphone 99 this is very rare case okay because there are lot of versions will coming in in between to reach this point okay but this is the highest point okay that means that beyond this we cannot go okay so similarly you have this rule sets defined on your applications so you have multiple rule sets 
that may be utilized in our project okay so today let's assume a, a real time example like i am having a banking application where i am processing the loans okay so there are different type of loans one is car loans one is housing loans okay so the car loans whatever i am developing it i may keep it in one specific rule set okay similarly the vehicle loan which i am developing it may be consuming in a different rule set so the behavior the rule set that i am utilizing for car loan might be a separate rule set and for the vehicle loan i may utilize a different rule set okay just for an example okay so that whatever the behavior for a car loan it remains in one specific rule set whatever the behavior of the housing loan remains in a separate rule set okay so you are grouping the rules in based on a rule set so it eases our job for maintaining the particular rules okay so in order to maintain the rules we are going to consume this rule set now the what is the significance of version is so this year whoever process whoever applied for the loans so that is something coming in the latest version the people who applied last year may have certain development activities done in the last year which may have older rule set versions okay so maybe the rule set versions will come in place whenever you are having the development activities done phase by phase okay so initially there might be some new enhancements that you may add it into your application so that new enhancements you may add it in a new version something like similar to pega as well so pega also doing the same thing so pega currently we are using 8.6 version okay so uh, similarly you have 8.5 8.4 8.3 8.2 8.1 okay and again inside each and every version also you will see some different patch versions like 8.2.3 8.1.1 okay so that kind of versions that you have it okay similarly you have a pega 7 version pega 6 version pega 5 version okay so all these are the different versions so incrementally what is the new features that pega is adding so those features are coming inside this rule sets so whatever you see the pega 8 version right so this is consuming all the pega new capabilities that were introduced in pega 8 6 version okay if you place it 8.5 version that means it is going to take the changes done in pega 8.5 version okay so this rule set version is mainly responsible to bring you the features that are coming in that particular version okay so if this is something we need to update it based on the version that we are using okay so here you can see this application is having the rule sets defined that we are going to utilize while we are doing the development activities okay so every rule set will have a specific version allocated okay so what is the version that i am using so that is something you will define it on your application rule form okay so on your application rule form you have list of all the rule sets that i can use in my application development okay and each and every rule set will have a rule set version as well okay so while we are creating the rule new rule you will see that there is a it will ask us which rule set i need to place this rule i am creating and which version i am need to place it so that is something we need to give while we are creating it all right so here in general as i said like there are certain rules which doesn't have version so that is the reason the rs stands for rule set here and application rule doesn't take version okay so some of the rules are available which doesn't take version here okay so similarly access group also doesn't depend on the version okay similarly operator also doesn't depend on the version see these type of rules is only associated with a rule set it is not associated to the rule set version why why because the rule set version is as i said as i said this is specific to the behavior of your application so operator id doesn't change the behavior it is just having the access provided so just for the logging purpose it may utilize it 
okay so the restriction will come in place only via the application so application is going to have the rule sets so the rules that are there inside these rule sets and the version that i am using it so that will only take into consideration so that version will bring the what is allowed by this operator to access okay so whereas if you are creating the rules then you will use the rule set version all right hope you are clear so far operator id access group and applica uh, application so these three are interlinked any questions all right so now let's see the access groups so you see there is a multiple access groups that you can provide over here so under each access group you may have a separate application also see it like uh, let's say there is a customer service representative who is supporting the loans application okay and he is working parallelly for some healthcare application as well so that particular operator he has an access to banking application and healthcare application okay so what happens is he can switch to that application whenever any customer service uh, any any customer calls that he is coming on behalf of healthcare division okay or he may switch to the banking application whenever he is getting the calls for the banking related queries okay so he can add all those access groups which he is eligible for okay so he will whatever the access groups that he will add it so those access groups should be pointed to the application one with respect to banking one with respect to healthcare okay so as and when you add these access groups so he will have an access to those applications okay so by default once you log in you will see the application which is default selected only one will be selected at a time okay so even though you have multiple access groups available here all those cannot be showcased so only you see pega platform is showcased here as and when you log in the default access group which is selected only that application will be showcased here but you have the option to switch to the second application once you click on this application you have the option called switch application and there is a option called dm sample so there is a different application this is okay so this dm sample call an administrator is a different application so we can access it if you are adding another access group so in this way we can add multiple access groups and each and every access group may have a separate application okay and that application you can switch back to okay so whatever the number of access groups that you added so all those access groups related applications you can see by using the switch application option all right and whereas in the access group you will see only one application you can specify at a time so there are nothing like multiple applications you can add in the access group okay so in the access group you will specify the application and a version as well okay so if you say this is pega platform pega rules 8 version okay so similarly if i say pega rules 7 version so it is not there but if you specify pega rules 7 application is also there in my system then what happens if you open it it will show you the rule sets which belongs to 7 version okay so it may have something like 7 iphone 04 okay because 7.4 is the last version so that way you will see the rule sets will have specifically for 7 version okay so this application incremented to 8 version okay if you say pega 6 version so that that means it will have the application rule sets which belongs to uh, uh, 6 version okay so you will see 06 iphone something like 03 or 02 okay so that way you will see the versions that are there inside that application that specifies which particular application version it is okay so whenever we are creating a new application version so in general let's say there is a, a yearly or quarterly uh, features that we will provide for a specific application or half yearly okay so for every quarter let's assume there, there are certain new things that we are including it so how do you differentiate the previous quarter and the current quarter that we are delivering the work 
so that is something we define via new version so you can create a new version as well so you can save this particular thing and specify the versions spe specifically for the previous version okay so we'll uh, discuss about those things while after we create a new application but right now you remember there is an application which has a version allocated and that application will have the rule sets that will be consumed while we are doing the development all right and inside an access group you have the portals so what is the portal is so whatever the work that we are development whatever whatever the work that we are developing we can see the work on some portal okay so the portal is basically for the end users who need to see what kind of work is done okay so in order to utilize my application okay so that is something we use a portal okay so this is also called as a portal but this is a developer portal so in order to do the development activities we are using this development portal called dev studio okay similarly you have admin studio and app studio app studio is something specified with a rule name called px express so these are the rule names okay so in order to display this app studio this is responsible so since it is having px express so this is something earlier in pega 7 we used it to call it as express studio so that is the na same name the rule name is having px express okay so here the rule name is px express but actually you see there is a it is coming as app studio how if you open this rule by default you have a description for a rule okay so that is the reason we need to always provide a meaningful description so initially you see this is a description okay whereas the id that you see this is the name of the rule okay name of the rule does not have any spaces does not have any special characters okay except the uh, operator id rule type operator id will have uh, the at the rate but in general while we create any new rules you does not have any special characters okay so you can have underscore but in general uh, we won't keep any other special characters okay so underscore is allowed uh, and there are no spaces are allowed while we are creating a new rule this is uh, id represents the name of the rule and every rule will be associated to a rule set so here you see there is a rule set version also showcased for us okay so portal rule is responsible to display the what are the portals that are accessible by the operator who logged in okay so i logged in via operator administrator at pega.com i have access to this application but which portals i am accessing so that is something we define in our access group so in our access group you see the portals that are available i could able to access this so px express is responsible for displaying as app studio developer portal is responsible to display this dev studio so whatever by default which is selected that will come in place as and when you log in so as and when i log in i'm coming i'm getting this dev studio why because this is default selected but whereas the other portals you can see in this okay so these all are development related studios that is the reason it is showing here okay so development related studios or development related portals you will see over here but in case if it is a user related portals you will see under the launch portal so on click of launch portal you see there is a another portal which is given for the end customers okay so this is meant for the end customers to utilize the options that are available so on click of case manager it launches a new portal in a new window okay so this is something we will give for the customer so as and when whoever uses my application so they will see this portal okay so of course we can customize it so customization in the sense we can move the ui however we want to have for the customer okay but the terminologies are main important for pega okay so mainly we need to focus only on the terminologies that we need to understand how the pega bpm application works okay so bpm is basically an end to end business transaction where you are going to do a step by step procedure 
okay so a step by step procedure that we do in order to fulfill the business what we need to achieve okay so as i said yesterday the to recruit one application so to recruit one employee what is the procedure that mean we need to follow okay so here yeah so applying the job which is done by initially by the recruiter and then the job process will start and then offer release okay so this is a simple flow which will redirect how to, in order to fulfill a job requestation okay in order to uh, 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 recruit one candidate so what is the procedure for it so there is a sequence of steps that has to be performed okay so where initially you may create a case type okay so now what is a case type so in pega what uh, whatever we start with so what is what is our end goal why to create this application to so our application is created let's assume for recruiting a candidate okay so in order to recruit a candidate okay so you need a procedure to follow so that procedure we are going to define using a case type okay so using a case type we are going to define the procedure this is how we are going to recruit a candidate okay so that we are going to use via a case type explorer which you see on the left hand side so this is a case type explorer where you are going to define the cases okay so once you define it then you will use this create option to start creating and applying for the job requestation okay so in order to hire a candidate you will use this option create option to create a, 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 a person's record of information okay so initially you need to define the case type what you are going to do so the step by step procedure what we are going to achieve it so that is something by using this case type explorer we are going to do it okay so using the case type we are going to define the procedure to uh, what all the things that we are going to do okay whereas the case is a particular record of information okay so i'm just explaining the terminologies so case type is the de definition of what we are going to do the step by step procedure okay applying for a job validating the re uh, resume okay verifying the pdn certification and then scheduling a slot okay so all these are the steps that we need to define on the case type so once we define the case type then we are going to use this application so then we are going to use this case type to create certain cases so case is particularly particularly a record of information for one one employee okay so there is something like i applied for a job so this is my case okay so i will be allocated with one case id okay similarly if you are applying for a job so you may have a separate case id okay so it's a unique identity given while we are creating a case okay so case is a particular record of information okay so specifically for one single person that particular case belongs to so all the information relates with that particular employee only yeah sorry any question okay so uh, you understand the difference between case type and a case so case type is a sequence of the steps that we have to define it so once after we define it then only we can create a case so case is one single record of information so if you define it then you will see that case type name over here okay by default the pega platform doesn't give any case types for us but while we create our application we will define our own case type okay so case type is the procedure that we need to define it and once we define the case type then only we are eligible to create a case okay and each and every case that we create it might be given for a person to work on okay so here you can see my cases which is something something like whatever i created okay by using this create option so i can see those cases appears over here okay so whatever the cases if i define it if i click on create and create a new case i can see that case id and the other set of information will appear over here so under the my cases i can see the list of cases that i created 
all right and the difference of my work list so what is a work list is so here you see as a recruitment process so initially the recruiter who is going to apply for a job okay so after applying for a job he will schedule an appointment with the interviewer panel member okay so interviewer panel member is there is an action item that he is assigned to okay so that is we called as an assignment assignment is something like we need to perform some action for that particular task that we are allocated to so it is assigned to a particular person so whatever the work which is assigned to a particular person that is called as an assignment and that placeholder where we can see is work list so work list is the place where we can see the seek what is the action items that i need to perform so this it may vary based on the operator who logs in okay so let's say i am a customer service representative i logged in okay or, or else let's say i am a recruiter i logged in okay so there is something like i need to book an appointment or slot uh, i need to book a slot for that particular candidate so that is a particular action item which i am pending which i which is pending from my side so i need to apply for that particular person what is uh, uh, the slot when to appoint for that particular candidate okay so that is something that is an action item that i need to perform similarly there is a, if once an interview is scheduled and there is an action item which may be given for a interviewer okay so interviewer going to add his feedback okay so that is another action that he has to perform okay so that action is a will be whatever the action has to be performed that will come under the work list so under the work list we will see the list of action items to be done by the person who logged in okay so i can see the action items that i will do it you will see the action items that you are assigned to complete it okay so this is something like what i am i am going to do it so that is something i will see over here but whereas case is high level like whatever the cases that i created but in the my cases for if i log in as a recruiter i can see the cases here but the, the interviewer logs in he may not see the my cases why because he didn't create the case he is just working on the actions that the uh, work items that he has assigned to do it okay so whatever the work which is assigned to him he will see only those items he may not see the my cases because he is not started any cases he is not creating any cases okay but as a recruiter if i log in so i can see the cases over here all right so you understand the difference between my case and my work list so my cases is a container where you see the cases that are created my work list is a container which is which will have the assignments or you can say the tasks or the actions to be done by the person who logged in by the operator who logged in okay so that will be coming under the my work list all right so just understand this terminology that pega utilizes so my work list is for the action items that need to be performed by the person who logged in okay so this completely is a bpm is something like action driven okay so action driven by a particular operator who logs in okay so that is something pega sort of applications will be doing so pega sort of applications is something like assigning one particular item to one person and that person will complete that work okay so similarly you may assign it to some other actor okay so that actor is responsible to perform his role okay so the actor whoever logs in their roles and responsibilities which is given to them he can perform only that particular thing okay so all these things the person who is logging in so there is a kind of a restriction what he has to do what he cannot do which is configured in our access group now coming to the access group so there is something called as available roles so this is responsible to restrict what has to be done by the person who logged in okay so the person who logs in so these are the roles which is again another rule type you see so these are the roles which are responsible for giving the permissions what has to be done by the operator who logged in okay so 
this is at being an administrator you see all our administrator related roles are added here okay so if whereas if in case we are creating an application and we have different set of users available for each and every user okay so specific to that user behavior roles and responsibilities you will add a different uh, role here okay so if you add a different role automatically that will take that role whatever we are going to restrict it so that is something we define in this particular role okay so this is again another role type where we are going to see how to restrict the things okay so as of now the in the access group we just have the roles defined what is the role which is going to provide for that particular operator who logged in all right so similarly like the operator who is working for one single application let's say i am a technical manager i am a interviewer uh, taking the in technical interview as well okay so two roles i am having so as a interviewer i will log in and i will give my uh, i will take the interview okay technical interview and as a technical manager since i do have another role as well so i will log in as a technical manager and i will provide my feedback in uh, i will give my approval as well okay so approval to take for to take forward so two things so as a technical uh, as a as an initial uh, interviewer panel i'm logging in and as a technical manager i'm approving it so both of these two roles are available for me in my access group so in this access group once you add those roles so the same operator who logged in he may act as a two different roles given for that particular person okay so these roles are responsible for giving you the accesses okay what what are the things that we can do and what are the things that we cannot do all right so this is about the access group so now let's go to the ppt okay so this is how we have so operator will have an access group access group will have an application and a version specified it has portals defined it has access roles defined an application comprises of rule sets okay rule sets with a versions specified okay so this way operator you have an access group so that is the reason access group will have an application so this application is pointed to this operator okay so the application that this operator can work on will be is provided in the access group so we just specify only the access group okay so this this is how the interlinking between operator access group and application so whenever we create a new application we need to manage this operator and access groups okay so which uh, which access group will be having this application pointed okay so those access groups all the people who belongs to this access group can see that application so if i add a new operator id pointing to this access group so it is something like this application whatever is specified that belongs to that second operator as well okay so similarly you can have n number of operators and by default we create a new operator and we must know the access group which we need to give for that operator okay so initially after we join into the team so they will ask us to create a operator by giving one uh, sample operator for us okay something like some colleague operator they provide and they will ask you to create your operator by taking that as a reference so now what you need to do is you need to do a save as of this rule okay so you just need to click on save as and you just need to provide the name of the operator okay so initially let's say if i am going to create my operator description is something like you will see after you log in okay so you may see somewhere over here okay but whereas the operator id is the one which is the name of the rule okay so id that you see this is the name of the rule okay so here i can specify so as it is operator id i need to specify at the rate okay so here this is allowed for this operator id rule type but whereas in general this at the rate is not going to accept okay so whenever we create a rule in general it won't accept any special characters except underscore or space is also not allowed okay but for the operator id it will allow the at the rate okay so this is how you create a rule okay but here the operator id doesn't take any rule set here initially 
okay but in general while we create any new rule so you will see that rule set and rule set version as well okay so now click on create and open so it's it will create a operator for us okay so this is saying that the access group field cannot be empty so this is being an empty access group it is not allowed so delete it and save it okay so this way i can create a operator id all right so this araviraj at the rate pega.com i can use it okay i can change the password in general you can say rules we will use okay so by default password you will keep it as rules so that it is easiest for us to remember okay so because everything that we deal in pega is the rule so we can use the rules as a password okay so what happens i have pointed raviraj at the rate pega.com and if i switch to this application as a default application okay so default access group i am specifying as dm sample now if i save this and if i log off i will log in with raviraj at the rate pega.com and password is rules so you can create a new operator today and point to the dm sample application so you can see now the application is coming as dm sample because my access group is pointed to dm sample okay so you can launch the portal so here you can see the case manager is coming in so let's see is there any cases case types defined for it if there are any case types there are, you can see here there are multiple case types are given for us okay so if there are case types then you can see the create option okay so now you see there is a different ui coming in right so here this is something pega 8 driven ui okay so the earlier one that you see where we have the create option coming at the top that is pega 7 ui okay so this is called as a theme so theme is basically how the look and feel it is okay so the theme is the naming convention that we have so theme is nothing but the look and feel of the portal so the look and feel of this portal the dm sample application is using a different theme that is the reason you see the options are appearing in a different way so you see this is having the new option coming at the left hand side so on click of new you will see this case types are coming in okay so you see there are case types that are appearing over here to create a new case type okay so this case if i want to create a new case just click on this new case okay so my work is similar to work list okay so there in pega 7 we have work list and in pega 8 this ui which we are seeing this is renamed as my work okay so this is something dependent on us we can also uh, change it at our naming convention however we want to follow okay so this is completely dependent on how we would like to customize it how we want to showcase it so that, that is something you can uh, uh, we can rename those things okay so here we are not showing cases my cases are not shown here so only my work is there so let's see uh, so here you can see this is a case id okay so initializing application ac-1 so this is something like a case id so after we create a new case so this as a case id which is created if i create once again it will increment to 2 so ac-2 that is a different case okay so the case ids is something like a unique identity for a case that we are creating okay so it's a you can see here this is a case where you have a different stages so something like what we are going to do under each and every uh, step by step okay so initially you will see there is a start okay after that you may have a data initialization customer desk assignment so this is something specific to this particular case type okay for ease of understanding you can have a simple stages where initially you may apply for a hr application so you may have a sub three stages okay so this we call it as a stage okay so under each and every stage you may have a separate processes again so on click of this you will see what is that case type is defined so inside inside this you will have a step what we are going to achieve as part of this stage completion okay so you may have certain inputs that you need to provide it okay so let's say if i click on this start okay so this is under under initialization phase okay 
so this is we cannot proceed further but in general while we create our own application so we can we can proceed further to create a new case types okay so those cases that we created so those things we will see under the my work okay so here you can see the cases as well as the work that we need to do it so those things are appearing in this my work itself okay so if i want to open it i will just click on it it opens it okay so we will similarly however it is there so we are going to define our stages okay so that whatever the work that we need to do it so you will see the buttons so that you will start and you will continue okay so you will continue by moving forward to the one stage to next stage okay so this way it will complete stage by stage to resolve this particular case okay so finally you will reach the from the start to the end point so you are going to have a business workflow defined and that business workflow will have a start point and you have an end point so once you reach to this stage it is resolved that means this case is completed okay so something like if the candidate is uh, got the offer okay that means resolved approved okay so that stage will have a something like what we have achieved as part of this complete case type okay so completing all the steps so something like the candidate has rejected in between so let's assume this is a uh, hr application so let's, uh, if the candidate is rejected what happens if he may not come continue for the next stages okay so that means he may reject it and it may go for the resolution state okay so that resolution state is resolved rejected so that is something like we are going to define via status okay so status is in a case is is used for defining where we are in okay so something like you are you have applied for visa so initially it may be in an open state okay going forward your visa processing is in phases okay so it may be in progress it may be going for the uh, next level of approvals okay so pending for the delivery so something like the status will give us the information about what where we are in okay so where exactly we are in it is something we get can get the information by using the status okay so in general we will see the case status also here okay so you see the case id and the status also appearing okay so as of now this is on a new state so similarly it may go for a pending state or in progress so this is something we can update it uh, however we want to apply however we are designing our case so that way it will automatically update the status as well so status and case id is the keywords that we need to remember while we are driving the case this status will update accordingly all right any questions here all right so channels uh, personas case types case themes so themes as i uh, said like the theme that we see this is called as a cosmos theme okay so remember the name cosmos which is introduced in pega 8.4 version onwards okay so this is a new way of uh, ui representation where you see on hover of the left hand side automatically this is coming outside okay so it is expanding as in when you are coming over this and it is automatically collapsing so this way it reduces the space okay so it is reducing the space and giving you the maximum utilization of the space that we can use okay so this is a cosmos ui but whereas the one which i have showcased for the pega platform application that is a ui kit okay so that is a uh, in pega 7 that that theme was there in pega 8 this theme was introduced all right so similarly you can see the same application it doesn't need to again recreate in mobile or uh, ipad so automatically it will adjust it so pega once you develop it so the same application you can utilize in the mobile browser as well so you can see automatically the space is adjusted as per the screen resolution okay so if you reduce the things so it will automatically adjust the space and give you that information uh, so automatically you will see only the horizontal scroll bar but no vertical scroll bars okay so vertical scroll bars are not there that means this is supporting the any kind of browsers okay so pega will automatically take care of the browser support okay so once you create the application the automatically the support for 
which type of browser is it a ipad device or mobile device any device it will automatically take the space which is given and that will be adjusted accordingly okay and there won't be any vertical scroll bars coming in okay so only horizontal scroll bars that is something like a as you use in the mobile so you will see only the horizontal things right so there is nothing no, nothing like vertically you will scroll it okay so pega is automatically having that user interface uh, uh, des designed in such a way okay so we can utilize this theme cosmos so that it is eases the more flexible components that are that will show a uh, more user experience okay so more user into into screens okay all right so with that uh, we'll stop here uh, ravi the dc sample application uh, is that a predefined pega application that is also predefined that is a decisioning application this is okay so this is also pega uh, with the pega platform itself we will see this application also so you can add that access group to your new operator that you create okay so create a new operator add this access group launch uh, this portal okay and log off and login and see uh, how the options are appearing over here okay so that you can switch the application using this option like you can see here dm sample is there pega platform if i want to switch you can switch it okay so you can see the the other one as well so whatever the access groups that are there in this operator you can switch to those applications okay 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 thank you all right all right uh, so we'll take a pause here so probably uh, next session we are going to have a application creation okay so we'll see by using both theme cosmos and theme ui kit okay so as i have shown you the application you can create it so at the time of application creation itself we will take which theme to be taken okay so if you take this theme ui uh, cosmos it will appear in this way if you take the theme ui kit so the one which i have showcased for the pega platform so that ui you will see so of course you can update it later as well but uh, while creation also you can uh add your which theme you want to add it okay so next session we will create a new application and then uh, we'll uh, proceed with that application uh, case types okay i hope uh, you are clear so far right